And tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, and he is Tyler Norris. And one of the things I find is the kind of the fun aspect and the unexpected uh, opportunity at the National Civic League Conference and the All America City Awards uh, program uh, is that you get to meet new people and you get to make friends and, and new networks. You're joining them, making them happen. Uh, and Tyler and I just in a brief conversation found that we had some connections, uh, Tajikistan and Idaho, believe it or not. Uh, so I hope that you not only celebrate the success of these communities, but you also celebrate the relationships and the friendships that you are developing. Uh, and then looking at the screen, Charles and others were with us last year and people continue to come back. Uh, sometimes they're here as their community representative, other times they're coming back as volunteers. So that is just an amazing uh, asset uh, to the organization and it shows the enthusiasm that we all have for the work that uh, the National Civic League does uh, for us. Uh, let me now just talk a little bit about Tyler, who is the Chief Executive of Wellbeing Trust, an impact philanthropy with a mission to advance mental, social, and spiritual health of our nation. Over the past three decades, Tyler has shaped health and development initiatives in hundreds of communities in the US and around the world. He has an extensive background as a social entrepreneur and trusted advisor to philanthropies, health systems, government agencies, and collaborative partnerships working to improve the health of people and places. Tyler also serves as a board member and advisor to Naropa University, the National Academies of Science, Child Wellbeing Forum, City Health, Enterprise Community Partners, and others. Prior to becoming the Chief Executive Officer of the Wellbeing Trust, Tyler served as Vice President for Total Health at Kaiser Permanente, where he led anchor institution work, applying all organizational assets to impact the economic, social, and environmental determinants of health. He previously served as the founding president and CEO of a leading health consultancy, community initiatives, and as founding board chair of IP3, the social enterprise that gave birth to the community of commons, a GIS data mapping platform. Earlier, he was the first director of what became the Convergence Partnership and a head coach uh, of the YMCA of the USA, an advisor to active living by design, and the Public Health Institute. He helped open the Abraham Path through the heart of the Middle East and led the Kahushtan Foundation that helped establish the national park system in Tajikistan. He is a graduate of Harvard's Business School Executive Program, earned a master's degree in divinity from Naropa University in Boulder, Colorado, and has a bachelor's degree in world political economy from Colorado College. Tyler has had an amazing career, has done some of the most fantastic things one can imagine uh, over his life. And I know there is so much more to come. So we are just really, really pleased and happy that you are with us tonight, Tyler, to share your thoughts and uh, to uh, uh, prick our imagination and encourage us to have the courage of our convictions uh, and do that work that needs to be done to make communities thrive. So Tyler, please. Valerie, thank you so much for such a beautiful introduction. I think all that was missing was my mother sitting here with me to hear what you said about uh, the last 30 years or so. And so thank you, uh, and also Doug, for including me uh, here in this um, extraordinary event that um, I first got to be able to participate in over 30 years ago when I worked at the National Civic League as the director of the Civic Assistance Program. And it is just a, a great pleasure to be here with you at an extraordinary time, uh, a time of pain and protest, uh, a time of purpose and power, a time when so much in our country has been unmasked uh, from racism to inequity and to widespread system failure, right alongside the kindness and generosity of this country rising to people in pain and suffering and finding a way to bring our communities forward. I'm honored to be here uh, not only uh, as an alum of the National Civic League in the era of John Gardner and Henry Cisneros uh, when they were chairs, 
but also alongside my alma mater, Kaiser Permanente, who helped co-host there, and Bashar Shukair, who helped uh, launch the Anchor Institution movement of helping hospitals bring all of their assets to bear in community, not just little grant making on the edge. Um, as was said, I'm calling in from rural Idaho today. I grew up in rural Idaho, and uh, you, you know the truth is, is returning to your hometown is always a, a bit revelatory. For me, it wasn't the easiest time as a teenager. I struggled. Uh, I struggled with substances. I struggled with some early mental health issues. And when I got into big trouble, instead of going off to jail, like so many kids do who uh, first uh, have a first offense, I found myself diverted. I found myself with an opportunity to uh, create restitution and have reconciliation with my community and to have my record expunged by the time I turned 18 so that I could get on with my life after spending two and a half years digging myself out of the hole that my friends and I had dug ourselves in. Community saved my life. And I dedicated much of the rest of my life to community which is why I also immediately ended up at the National Civic League uh, in that time. Um, I lead an organization called Wellbeing Trust, who, like Kaiser Permanente, shares a mission to advance the mental, social, and spiritual health of the country. We're trying to do three things well. One is to get the care right, integrated, whole person, mental health care that addresses body, mind, and spirit and makes the assessment and referral to non-medical needs a standard of care, not an afterthought. That's what quality care needs to become. I'm going to take a quick pause. You guys hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you fine, Tyler. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure <laughs> in, this, in this environment. To get the care right, where, where the assessment and referral to non-medical needs is a standard of care, which means that the health system has to partner directly with community organizations to be referral networks so that community is essentially at the heart of what creates health to begin with. Our second role is around increasing affordable access to integrated mental health care and enforcing mental health parity standards uh, so that people can get the care they need with quality. But third, and most closely tied to the theme of tonight and, and the work of the National Civic League, is creating the vital conditions for intergenerational well-being. Even if we work to get the care right so that people have great integrated care and, create the, uh, and increase access to care when people need it, we need to get upstream with what creates community, healthy communities in the first place. And 30 years ago, the National Civic League became a leader in the field to help shape what healthy cities and healthy communities would become. And hundreds and hundreds of communities later, like Oklahoma City that I read about uh, about a half a year ago, that were in phase five of the MAPS program that we helped launch at the National Civic League 30 years ago, uh, a planning process called Central Oklahoma 2020. It was aimed at this year. 30 years in the future. And here was the fifth bond initiative that's helping create a walkable, bikeable, mixed use, welcoming, transit oriented development, downtown Oklahoma City connected to its rural, uh, to its community cities and counties around it. That's the kind of transformative work that we know is so critical. The National Civic League has always been committed to this premise of citizen democracy that we could send our elected leaders off to the State House and off to Washington, D.C. with relative degrees of success, as we certainly are experiencing right now, but that the work of the community is on the field, that there is no duplicate for what business, government, nonprofit, faith leaders, people without titles after their names, grassroots leaders who are doing the work of building trust, building cohesion, building reciprocity, building a civic infrastructure that communities at work. That premise of the National Civic League, rooted in American pragmatism, what Alexis de Tocqueville wrote about to his fellow Frenchmen in 1834. Those Americans, he said, they come together without anybody's permission to discuss the issues of the day, 
to debate alternatives and to build the community and political will to implement that. <laughs> he wrote, essentially, who do they think they are? Well, we know who we think we are because we know that that American pragmatism is the font of this nation. And in such a time as we find ourselves now between COVID and economic dislocation and social dislocation, and a time when more of us are aware of the underlying structural racism that has been built into our society since its founding, and how many of us are trying to rise, what does it mean for me to be anti-racist? What must I do? How can I look at myself to actually be the kind of leader that's needed? That's the work that the National Civic League signs its, uh, shines the, the light on so beautifully. When I was at the National Civic League, my mentor at that time, James Rouse, said, a healthy community is a garden to grow people in. That's the spirit of the All-America City uh, Awards, and it is the spirit with which I am so excited to be here for the awards tonight. When we act with respect, hold everyone with dignity. When we take the time to listen with kindness and goodness, community coming together will always light the path. Whatever may divide us, that which connects us is greater still. The cities in this country give me hope, and I am so excited to be able to participate tonight in learning more about your work and in seeing which of the finalists will be acknowledged tonight uh, in this work. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words, and I am very much looking forward to the program this evening. Thank you.